Before we get into today's show, let me tell you about HubSpot. If you're hustling in the trenches to build a business or bootstrapping one of your own, let's talk about an AI-powered tool that can lighten up your workload a bit. HubSpot's campaign assistant is a game changer for creating marketing campaigns at scale. It quickly turns your key selling points into a cohesive pitch, which helps you deliver knockout emails, ads, and landing pages in minutes. So let campaign assistant take care of the campaigns so you can get back to growing your business. Work smarter, not harder at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Howdy, folks. It is Thursday, June 30th. I'm Jacob Cohen sitting here with Juliet Benarila. And right now, you are listening to The Hustle Daily Show. We've got two stories on the docket for you today. Juliet's going to fill you in on Brendan Carr, an FCC commissioner calling for Apple and Google to take TikTok down from their app stores. And I'm going to break down what the heck is going on with Bed Bath & Beyond. The stock's down more than 90% since its pandemic high. But before we get to that, let's fill you in on the latest in business and tech. Let's get crack a All right, first things first. Yesterday, Snapchat officially launched its paid subscription plan called Snapchat Plus. For $3.99 a month, subscribers will get access to special settings, prioritize support, and special features like the ability to see who rewatched your stories. I think that's actually very smart and a very intriguing kind of psychological hack and very hard to go back once you start using it. In May, Snap said it'll miss its revenue goals for Q2 22. So we'll see if this launch can snap things up for Q3. All right, what is next? A new report from Northwestern University's Journalism School found that over 360 newspapers in the United States have gone out of business since just before the start of the pandemic. Since 2005, the U.S. has lost around 2,500 newspapers, or a rate of about two per week. One issue here, among many, is that this is really perpetuating the issue of news deserts, where more and more people, now a fifth of Americans or 70 million people, live in a place that either does not have or has just one way to access local news. That is not surprising, I suppose, but it is disappointing. Yeah, not surprising, but disappointing. (laughs) I think that's a good way to describe (laughs) most things in life. Yes. I have seen a lot of little blogs pop up, but it's hard to keep those going. Right. Moving along, a group of 35 delivery companies, automakers, and tech firms wrote a letter to California Governor Gavin Newsom basically saying the state will lose its competitive edge if it does not lift its public road ban on autonomous vehicles that are over 10,001 pounds. So things like semis and buses, for example. Now, companies like Waymo, UPS, Volvo, and Uber signed the letter. A study from 2017 found automated trucks could reduce the demand for drivers by as much as 50 to 70 percent in the U.S. and Europe by 2030 probably a lot of bad blood between the trucking industry and big tech here right now. And it's probably only going to get uglier throughout the decade. But get a load of this. NYC's wealthiest inhabitants are reportedly getting bladder Botox and prostate artery embolizations to combat what's known as Hampton's bladder, according to a report from Business Insider. Basically, for those who do not know, the Hamptons are a super fancy schmancy beachy area about 100 miles from New York City out on Long Island. These people are paying for procedures that reduce their need to pee on the drive there. Whatever happened to peeing on the side of the road, right? Mm. Can I get this procedure so that I can watch the entirety of one Marvel movie in a theater? One Marvel? How about one episode of Stranger Things? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true as well. Yeah, seriously. I don't know. I see a lot of I see a lot of potential for this procedure. For sure. All right. And with that, let's dive into our two main stories of the day. All right, Juliet, what are you looking at? So I am looking at TikTok, the biggest app in in the world, basically. But Brendan Carr, one of the commissioners of the FCC, would like both Google and Apple to kick it from their app stores because, according to Carr, it misrepresents data collection info, which would be against the store's policies. Mm. He has asked both companies to respond to him by July 8th. So his big deal here is TikTok is owned by ByteDance, a Chinese company headquartered in Beijing, which, according to Carr, means that it is, quote unquote, beholden to the Chinese Communist Party. Now, earlier this month, BuzzFeed reported on leaked audio from internal TikTok meetings that indicated U.S. user data had been accessed from China. At the time, TikTok said it would route all U.S. Mm -hmm. user data to Oracle cloud servers in the U.S., but Carr is concerned that TikTok's statement says nothing about where the data can be accessed from. Now, he was on CNBC's Tech Check this morning, which I listened to, and he was asked like, okay, so what exactly is the threat here? And he didn't really have a specific answer other than that data, which could include biometric data, so your face, your voice, uh, location data, et cetera, 
could potentially fall into the hands of the CCP. That's that's his thing. Right. Now, you may be asking yourself, what are the chances that I will no longer be able to watch my favorite dance and or cute kitten videos? Apparently not very high. Okay, good. Because <laughs> when it comes down to it, the FCC does not regulate app stores. So what are you going to do? Ah. It may change some people's minds. You know, I know a lot of people who deleted various apps over their concerns about privacy, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, that is interesting. I'd be surprised if a significant percentage of Gen Z, for example, on TikTok gave a shit about this. <laughs> like, too. I just don't think they're concerned about the app's parent company being beholden to the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah. The data also doesn't even seem to show it, right? These concerns have been relatively well publicized since TikTok got big in 2020. Mm -hmm. You could even look at Facebook in this sense. They've dealt with so many of these privacy issues and 3 billion people still use Facebook. And TikTok is more of an entertainment app like Netflix to them than it is some kind of social app that collects all their data. So it's just a hard sell, I think, to younger people to get them to be concerned about the privacy issues here. It's kind of ironic because TikTok is increasingly becoming a political engagement tool in the United States. Mm, absolutely. You see more and more local and even national level politicians use it. Yeah. And we've also seen that with Twitter. I feel like sometimes TikTok and Twitter are the best sources for breaking news. We saw that with the war in Ukraine. So I don't see it going away anytime soon. Yeah. All right, Jacob. And what are you looking at today? All right. So I am looking at some bed, bath and bad news. Mm. All right. So first of all, there's nothing better than a goal of 20 percent coupon from Bed Bath & Beyond. They do great coupons there, <laughs> but that's only the case unless you are Bed Bath & Beyond. Right. A lot has happened with this company the last few years and especially this week. So just for a quick rundown, in 2019, Mark Tritton, a Target veteran, took over as CEO, his primary focus being really reducing product counts and shifting towards private label brands, something Target, I think, has done historically really, really well. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I think that's kind of what he tried doing at Bed Bath Beyond. And in 2021, the company actually reached a market cap of $6.4 billion, but really as a result of just getting caught up with the GameStop, AMC, meme stock mania, because by the end of 2021, it fell significantly. And that was a result of sales falling significantly too. During the holidays, Bed Bath Beyond experienced what one might call the retail giant equivalent of the, the show Wipeout, if you've ever seen it. I mean, they were just dealing with everything that could go wrong for retail supply chain. They lost out on $175 million in sales just because of out-of-stock items, which is just very unfortunate. And this week, the company reported same-store sales dropped 24% from a year earlier. Online sales fell 21%, and Triton stepped down. What is more, a report from Bank of America found the company cut air conditioning in its stores to lower costs, though the company denied actually directing stores to do so. Still not a good look. And in the coming months, they're expected to find a new leader, no. potentially a buyer for Bye Bye Baby, and ideally a future beyond their current situation. Bada bing, bada boom. That is going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for tuning in to The Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano. Our executive producer is Darren Clark. If you like what you heard today, we've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. Sign up at thehustle.co. Hope you have a really lovely Thursday, and we'll see you tomorrow. Hey, guys. If you listen to The Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.